Hello everyone, my name is Rita and in this presentation I and Juan will show you how to use Blender to generate a mesh with an awful geometry. Before we begin we would like to thank Joseph for the opportunity and we hope this sharing will be useful. In pre-processing of an open foam case for the preparation and export of the STL file, we can use Blender. Blender is an open source software for 3D modeling tools that allows for the further develop of Python models. Like in the open foam community, there is a huge number of people around the world who are dedicated to develop models and tools in Blender. Sometimes we find errors in the STL that make it difficult to generate a quality computational mesh and Blender can help us overcome these problems. In this presentation, we will identify and repair in real time the most common errors that we can find in the NSTL file. Finally, we will show you how to prepare a geometry to generate the computational mesh and how to prove that repairing a geometry is important to generate mesh with quality and suitable for simulation. What is a real STL file? An STL file represents a surface of 3D model as a mesh of a triangles, and so it is composed of vertices, edge, and face. It's an approximation of the original design and contains information of both inside and outside of a part. Each triangle also has a normal vector which defines what side of a triangle face outward. The STL file can be exported in two different formats, binary format or ASCII format. For this to be used in CF Mesh software or SnapEX Mesh, it is necessary for it to be exported in ASCII format. But then, how do you know that our STL was quality? What is real the correct STL? The correct STL based model is characterized by closed and connect triangles that don't overlap and where every edge is part of two triangles. However, on converting from K to STL, Errors can frequently arise due to a fault in the conversion. The real problem with exporting an STL is in fact it being defined by the vertex coordinates. That is, if there are duplicated vertices or edge at first glance, it will be difficult to detect this. Because every edge or face is not defined as entity and ID. This can trigger a variety of different errors. Holes or gaps in a mesh. This occurs when the adjacent triangles fail to share two common vertices. Flip normals. Each triangle in the mesh has a normal vector, which points out to the other side of a triangle. When the design model was a flipped normal to generate a computational mesh has difficulty in identifying the inside and the outside of the model. Intersecting and overlapping triangles. This error occurs when two surfaces overlap or cross one another due to the complexity of the internal geometry. This error can cause problems for meshing software in detect the edge of the resource. Bad edge. The problem of bad edge is encountered when the edge of the triangles are not properly connected to each other, creating holes and bad contours. Bad edge results in a non meaningful design, so patching and blending bad edge with dedicated software tools can help to repair the file. Noise shells. Shells are the outer layers on the outside of the model. It can cause problems in identifying the surface for the mesh generation. In the next part of this video, Juan will show you how you can repair all these mistakes that we can find in the geometry. Hello everyone, my name is Juan Castro and I'll be showing you, in this part of the tutorial, how to use Blender to repair a faulty STL geometry. We are going to go over some topics, such as the work environment in Blender, the very basics, and some useful tools, and how to use them. Please keep in mind that this is a very beginner-friendly tutorial, and I'll be covering with detail the steps that I'm following. First, we need to open the program itself. This is what you are going to see as soon as you open Blender. Here, we can see that we have this menu on the right with some features. For what we are going to do, these are useless, so let's delete them. Just select them all and press delete on your keyboard. The first step is to import the file. To do so, we are going to click on File on the top left corner, then Import, and then STL. Now look for your file. Mine is this one, so I'll just import it by clicking on this blue button. 
And there we go. The geometry is here. While we are here, let's install an add-on called 3D Printing Toolbox. What it does is basically help identify some of the problems we have in our geometry. Let's click on Edit, then Preferences, Add-ons, look for 3D, and there we go. It's this one right here. You just have to check it, like this, and you're done. With add-on installed, to turn it on, we must click on this icon with the tools on the right. After that, click on Workspace and then turn the add-ons on by clicking on this box. Now, turn on Mesh 3D Printing Toolbox. I'm gonna turn on an uh, extra add-on so you can see what I'm clicking. After you turn the add-ons on, you can press the N key on your keyboard and this menu, menu is going to pop up on your right. You go to your desired add-on and here are the options. I have to turn on screencast keys and it's done. Now we can work on your geometry. Now that we have our part imported, let's analyze the workspace itself. In the top right, we can change the view mode on these four icons. I'm going to choose the far left one because it's the one that I prefer. If you press Alt Z or simply click in here, like this, you can go into X ray mode, which allows you to see through the geometry and, most important, select through it. I also like to get rid of the floor, axis, and origin so I get a cleaner look in my workspace. Keep in mind that this is all personal preference and doesn't need to be done. To do what I just said, you have to click on this arrow and then unselect floor, axis, and origin. And as you can see, you get a much cleaner look. To move around, it's quite different from some CAD softwares, which I assume you are familiar with. In here, we have to select a central point, which is going to be the center of our workspace, and every time we zoom in or out, it's going to be on that point. The rotation is around that point as well. Let me demonstrate that to you. As you can see, no matter where my cursor is, every time I zoom in or out, I'm going to zoom on this central point because it's the default center of our workspace as of now. To change that, with the Alt press, we can click somewhere on the geometry We are with our middle mouse, like this, and now this is the central point of our workspace. And every time I zoom in and out, it's going to be there. Also, like I said, if we rotate around it, as you can see, it's always around this point. To get a view parallel to a default plane, it's possible to use these axes on the top uh, right, like this. What I like to do is do some quick swipes. If you hold the Alt key and then with the middle mouse button pressed, you can do a quick swipe up, for example, and you're getting the, uh, the next parallel view. If I do left, I'm going to get the, the next one to the left. And you keep, can keep doing that until you get the view that you want. Now, let us get to work. To do so, the first step is to go from Object Mode into Edit Mode by clicking in here. One thing we are going to do a lot is selecting faces and edges. To change between different selection modes, we can click on these icons, but it's way faster if we use the shortcuts 1 for Vertex, 2 for Edge, and 3 for Face. Talking about selection, let's see how it works by selecting some edges in here. To select an edge, Simply click on it. As you can see, if I hold the Ctrl key, it doesn't select the new edge while maintaining the previous selection. What it does is create the shortest path of edges from the previous selection to the current one. Basically, it does what Shift does in other programs and, consequently, Shift does what Ctrl normally does. They are just switched. If you want to select a bunch of edges manually, it might be faster to go into Selection Mode by pressing C. You can make the sphere bigger or smaller by scrolling up or down. And once you are done, just press the right mouse button to get out of the selection mode. Now, let's say you want to select a bunch of faces that are linked together. There is a very helpful command for that found in here. Link Flat Faces is going to select all the faces that are linked together 
and don't have an angle bigger than the one you choose here on this window on the bottom left. This is where the settings from the tools show up, so always look there to tweak your tool options. As you can see, if I change the angle to 10, I'm going to select all these faces, leaving the side ones unselected. This is a command you are going to use a lot, therefore, edit your quick favorites by pressing the right mouse button on top of the command and then add to quick favorites. You can access the quick favorites menu by pressing Q. The first step into repair is to select all faces and then triangulate them. This way, we make sure that the geometry isn't missing any triangles. To select all the faces, press A and then Ctrl T to triangulate them all. Now, let's open the 3D printing toolbox by pressing N and use it to identify some errors we might have. First, all the options in this tool can be added to your quick favorite menu. By clicking on solid, we identify some non-manifold edges, which are edges that are not connected to two different faces, which should not happen. Blender itself already has a non-manifold command, but it mixes the non-manifold and bad contiguous edges errors from the 3D toolbox, which is not a problem since you have to correct them both. For this first part, I'm going to use them separately. Later, you might see me use the Blender based one, because I prefer it. One of the errors you can find with this tool are holes like we have in here. We saw how to select edges and faces previously, but in this case we can be way faster if we select the whole loop instead of doing it manually. You, you can do this by using this tool found in here, or just use the default blender shortcut by holding Alt and then selecting an edge. To fill, simply press F and then Ctrl T to triangulate the faces. We are going to do the same for this other hole in here. To recheck the error, you must click on Solid again, and only then on Non-Manifold. As you can see, the number of non-manifold edges went down, which means we successfully fixed this part. In here, we have a much, much bigger hole. If I try to reuse the same strategy, it's going to work. However, I'm going to lose a lot of resolution, because the program itself is not able to create curves and will always create a smaller number of triangles possible. Let me demonstrate that to you. So, to repair this hole, we are going to do it by sections. This is something I advise you guys do most of the time, because we'll all, you will always have more control of what you are doing and we'll be facing way fewer building errors, because Blender does a much better job calculating how to fill faces for smaller sections. Now that we have repaired this part, let's check the toolbox to make sure everything is alright. And it seems like it is. Now, these faces on top are clearly intersecting each other. To find intersections, normally use intersection on the toolbox. But most of the time, these faces have non-manifold edges, so by repairing this error, you also end up repairing the intersect faces. To do this repair, I'm going to select all the linked faces and delete them. Keep in mind that if you hold Shift, you can do multiple of these selections, like I am doing. In this case, it seems like 1 degree is too low, so let's set it up a bit. As you can see, it works wonders. Once they are all selected, let's delete them, and then rebuild this part. Let's select the outer loop, and then the inner loop. Now let's fill, the tr let's fill and then triangulate. Well, this doesn't seem right at all. The fill command doesn't work well to fill with rings like this. But don't worry, let's go back by pressing Ctrl Z and try with a different fill method. Now, this time, instead of pressing F, we are going to press Alt plus F. And as you can see, it works just fine. Sometimes, one method is better for some situations than the other. 
like you have seen in here. If you see that one isn't working well, try the other. Again, let's recheck to make sure everything is ok before we move on. Now, let's check the center of our gear. Seems like the inner face is not connected to the top ring. I could delete it all and reveal it, but I'll show you a very interesting tool that could save you lots of time. However, you need to use it with caution. Let's select these two loops and then press M to go into the merge menu. Then we are going to merge by distance. As you can see, with a value too small, they are not going to merge. And if we choose a value too big, like for example 0.1, we are going to lose a lot of resolution. To find the best value, we must adopt the try and error method. For this distance, I reckon that 0.005 is a good value. And it seems like it is. Let's check on solid again. And as you can see, it is solved. Now, it seems like there are no more non-manifold edges, however, the toolbox still indicates a lot. We could look around, check edge by edge, but it will take too much time. Instead, let's use a trick that I discovered. Let's select all the non-manifold edges, and then press E to extrude them. As you can see, there are a lot in the middle, and since they are not highlighted in orange, I assume that they are overlapping zero edges. Zero edges are edges that are really small or overlapping others. This might cause a few errors when generating your mesh. Because of this, they tend to be hard to find. Luckily, we can use this extra trick to find them. Sometimes, you might not find a zero edge with a non-manifold command, so always check all the options available in the toolbox. Let's check by going into Degenerate and then Zero Edges. To repair this error, Instead of deleting one by one or rebuilding the part, we can use the command merge by distance again. Since these edges are so close together, we can safely merge them to others without affecting the geometry detail. To see how far we can go with the distance, we can look at the length of a really small edge and use a tenth of its measurement. Let's click on this arrow and then check edge length. Now, let's see how big a really small edge is. This one in here is around 0.003. Now let's press A to select all the edges, then M, and then merge by distance. And just to be on the safe side, let's choose 0.0001. And as you can see, we removed a lot of duplicates. Let's check with the toolbox to see if we solve them all. And it looks like we did. Now that we got rid of zero edges, let's see if there are no more non-manifold edges. Seems like there are, but only a few. We cannot identify them by eye, so let's use the extra trick again. And there it is. It seems like it's a small hole. Let's fill it, and we are done. Now that we fix all the non-manifold edges, let's check for bad contiguous edges by going into solid and then pressing here. This option shows you edges that belong to faces with a normal in opposite directions. The fix itself is pretty easy. Just select all the faces and then go into mesh, normal, recalculate outside, or the shortcut shift plus n. Let's make sure we solved all the problems and as we can see, we did. Next, going along the menu, we have intersections. Like I said previously, this tool shows faces that are overlapping each other. Normally, the only way to repair this problem is deleting and rebuilding the faces, like I did. However, sometimes you don't have to rebuild, because the problem relies on the existence of faces you don't want, so you can just delete them. As you can see, we have none because, like I said before, most of the times we solve this problem with a non-manifold tool.
Going along with the menu, we have Degenerate. The first option shows us the zero faces, but they don't represent a meaningful error and are related to the areas of the faces. If you were to scale this geometry up, a small face wouldn't be small anymore and, therefore, the error wouldn't show up. This is something we can just ignore and focus only on the zero edges, which we already covered, and, because of that, we have none. The other tools are very useful, but not for us, so we won't be touching them in this tutorial. If you want to use Blender for 3D printing, feel free to explore those later. Seems like we don't have more errors, so we can conclude that our geometry is repaired. That is all for me. For the next part, Krit is going to show you some extra features and demonstrate while generating a mesh, why repairing and tweaking your geometry is worth your time. Root Utility Check Surface Mesh, a utility that checks the entire triangle surface of the STL, you can verify that this geometry has 64 manifolds, open boundaries, non manifold hedge, bad quality triangles, self intersecting parts, and overlapping parts. A total of 6 checks indicating potential problems. On the other hand, when we check the repaired STL file, the surface passes all the checks, which means that we are able to correct all errors. Let's now prepare the geometry to generate computational mesh. I will then show you how you can prepare geometry to generate a mesh with Cartesian mesh and SnappyX mesh from Blender. First, we will start by defining the patch for later application of the boundary condition. Let's go to Edit Mode. and select. You can use different shapes to select the region. Box selection or selection circle. Or even black link flat bracelet. Go to Mesh, Create Selection. Or you can also use the Bisect tool. So select All, Mesh, Bisect, Draw a Line, and select Loops, Loop all in your region. If you want to separate the other side, select Invert. And again, mesh right selection. If you want to rejoin, so select object mode, object join. Or again, separate so edit mode, select. All mesh create wireless part. If you want to use CF mesh, we need to export different STLs to the case folder. For this, we will file export STL select directory and we need select ASCII format and object. In light of the STL file, it was the name of the object that I defined in Blender, we need to leave it empty here. So let's export there. And here we have our STL files that correspond to the surface of the different patch we have defined. But now, to mesh with Cartesian mesh, we need to use this script called Unique STL. This script consists of a loop that will join all the STLs that we have in a single STL while maintaining the definition of the surface. After that, STL file is converted to FMS format, which will serve as input to mesh ticks that we can find in the system folder. Let's run the script.
go to system folder I'm just going to generate a simple mesh with a uniform cell size throughout the domain. So finally, Cartesian mesh. Now, let's see you can look at our computational mesh and verify that the pets are all defined. But what if you want to use Snappy X Mesh to generate computational mesh? You return to Blender and here you can use an add-on that allows you to create the files to generate the mesh. Here we put the directory that, as you can observe, only has folder 0. Here, we put the cell size we want. We add the location of our mesh that is the select the point that is inside the geometry. And finally, Include in export patch. And finally, export. And now, on our directory, we already have the constant and system folder and all the files we need to generate the mesh. And in my batch file, I'll run, I enter the command to create the poly mesh folder and move the block mesh ticked from the system folder to the poly mesh folder that was inserted by Blender Hadden in the constant folder. And then, you follow with the normal procedure to generate the mesh with SnappyX mesh. So, block mesh. Surface of Futures and Snappy X Mesh of right. Now we can see the mesh generated with Snappy X Mesh in the purview and with the patch defined. To prove that the repairing of geometry in preprocessing is crucial to generate mesh with quality for simulation, we did a small study. We tried to generate mesh with an repaired geometry and with the repair reward. Before repairing the STL file, we obtained a two non-orthogonal faces, two skew faces, and failed on mesh sets. On the other hand, when we generate mesh with repaired the STL, we get a mesh OK. That is, according to TF Mesh, a mesh suitable for simulation. To check the efficiency and importance of repairing the geometry before generating the mesh, we decide to test 10 different levels of refinement. Level 10 corresponds to a more refined mesh. We can verify that we don't have freedom of mesh refinement using original geometry, and that even by varying the cell size, we cannot obtain a quality mesh. On the other hand, with correct geometry, we have no problem and generate the mesh always with quality. We can conclude that Blender and presented tools allows an efficient manipulation of geometries. The 3D print toolbox was able to detect an indicate location of all errors pointed out by check surface mesh utility. The errors reported by check surface mesh utility and the Blender toolbox Limited generation of appropriate computational meshes. Blender and presented tools proved to be efficient to help solving some difficulties usually faced in pre processing tasks. The Snappy X Mesh add on proved to be efficient in creating the files needed to generate computational mesh, minimizing the user integration. And that's it. Thank you for your attention.